Hello, my name is Jens Bieler and I'm with the University of Bonn. Today I present our work on domain transfer for semantic segmentation of LiDAR data using deep neural networks. In this work we are interested in semantic scene understanding, which is a critical part of self-driving cars. In particular we are interested in semantic segmentation, where we want to assign each pixel of an image with a semantic label, but also point clouds, where we want to assign each point of the point cloud a semantic label. This information is uh, particularly interesting for self-driving cars as it distinguishes between different types of uh, road surfaces like road, um, pedestrian areas, but also parking lots. It furthermore provides the car with information about the extents of objects, like for cars, pedestrians and cyclists. Here we are interested mainly in LiDAR-based semantic segmentation, which recently got uh, interest, uh, increasing interest in the uh, research community. However, when we train a model on one sensor, we cannot easily transfer it to a different sensor. Here shown is an example where we trained a model on a 64-beam um, LiDAR sensor, um, um, namely the Kitty dataset, and transfer it to the new scene data. And uh, using this, we can now see the following, that when we um, compare the ground truth with the generated results by this uh, model, which we just trained on the Kitty dataset, then we get wrongly classified uh, pedestrians in this area here. So this shows the street junction and the pedestrian crossing and the pedestrians crossing here are wrongly classified as vegetation or uh, car points. Furthermore, we can see that also the ground surface, um, which would provide the car with information about the navigatable space, are also wrongly classified. Here we can see that the road surface is wrongly classified as terrain, which would uh, lead to uh, wrong driving behavior in the end. To elevate the problem, we are now proposing a sensor-oriented method to generate labeled point clouds for a target sensor from existing labeled point cloud sequences. Here the idea is to take an input labeled uh, point cloud data set, generate a synthetic scan, which we then can use to train a model um, for the uh, final target data set. The goal is to exploit labeled data. For this purpose, we are using here the so-called semantic kitty data set which was labeled uh, for the Kitty odometry data benchmark and provides over 20,000 labeled scans. Um, as shown here, the Kitty data set was recorded with a Velodyne 64, which has the following field of view. We now want to um, transfer the labels such so that we get a scan from a target domain, which is here now, uh, for this example, the new scene data, which uses a 32-beam Velodyne um, sensor. And as you can see here, the, um, the LiDAR point cloud is much sparser, but also shows a different field of view. So the field of view is much larger and shows also the upper parts of buildings. Our approach is now that we um, generate a labeled point cloud that uh, looks like uh, taken from the, source to, uh, from the target domain um, and transfer the scan with the label information from the source domain to the target domain, such that we have now a, 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 a LiDAR scan that looks uh, much similar to the target domain. And for this purpose, we investigated two different methods. One method is the point-based sampling method, which we call now CP, or closest point in the, in the, the remaining slides, or the mesh-based sampling method, which uses a mesh in between that we call M. Our approach is now that we take a sequence of point uh, clouds, uh, which we use from this uh, Kitty data set, which also provides us with post information. And using this post information, we can now aggregate the point cloud. This aggregated point cloud can then be used by array casting to generate, uh, using the sensor geometry of the target sensor, a point cloud that looks like it would be recorded by this uh, target sensor, but, using all, but retaining the label information from the original source data set. We then can also um, use in our second approach a mesh-based approach where we investigated here to use uh, the sequence of point clouds to first generate a labeled range image and using this we can then generate a so-called uh, truncated sign distance function which uh, provides us then with a labeled triangle mesh and using this triangle mesh we can then use again the ray casting but now intersecting the rays with the um, triangle information to get then a synthetic point cloud. For integrating the label information into the range image, we investigated new speed, uh, now three uh, different methods. Shown here are the points uh, from 
different uh, points of time that are getting projected into the same range pixel. Um, and for this we investigated now three methods, which uh, the first one is the class agnostic um, uh, closest point method, where we just use all nearest points that contribute to the range image. So that means um, we are not considering the uh, time uh, when the point was recorded and just take the label from the nearest point. In the second method, we are using um, all points that get projected in the same range pixel and then use um, a majority vote over the labels for all the points to assign a semantic label for this uh, range image pixel, which is then used to generate the TSDF. In the last method, we are considering only the, the first uh, point that provides the semantic information. That means points that come after that in, uh, from a timestamp um, are not considered anymore. And the remaining scans are used to fill in parts that are not seen by the first sensor or the, sec uh, for, for, uh, the first pose. Lastly, we use uh, the so-called geodetic correlation alignment to furthermore improve the domain adaptation. Here the idea is that we use um, two networks where we put into one network our generated scan with the label information and get from this the class loss which provides us with information about the semantics which we can then use to, to um, uh, optimize the parameters of the network. But at the same time we use this uh, uh, second network with shared weights where we put in the target scan. And now the idea is to um, align the covariances of the last layers such that they are similar to each other. And um, for this we then get a so-called domain loss, which is then the geodetic distance between the covariances of the uh, source and target domain uh, layers, so that we further align the feature representations in the last layers of the, um, of the network, so such that they look similar to the, tar uh, to the target domain. We evaluated our approach now to transfer semantic labels from the semantic kitty dataset to the new scene dataset. For this purpose, we labeled, as shown here, a complete scene from the new scene label data uh, from the new scene data set. Um, and important to notice here that we not use this label information in the process of learning this model. And for evaluation, we are using the mean intersection over union uh, metric. For the scan generation, um, we can now see the following. When we have the baseline approach, which is just trained on the um, Kitty dataset, we see that we get in the end uh, something around 12.3 percent uh, uh, mean intersection over union. When we now apply with a single scan our closest point method, we can uh, substantially increase this to 31.3 percent. Here the mesh-based approach doesn't show uh, an advantage. When we now use multiple scans to generate this point clause, and the uh, uh, labeled range image and use this in the TSTF to get the mesh approach, we get then um, as an increase for the mesh-based approach. When we then furthermore use the correlation alignment, we can uh, see furthermore that we can improve the results um, over all classes, but also in terms of MIOU. So that means we are achieving something around 31% for just using domain transfer and when we then use uh, additionally the correla uh, correlation alignment we uh, can increase it to 35 uh, percent of mean intersection over union. Our qualitative results show also this uh, greatly improved uh, results. As you can see here um, most of the points get now correctly, uh, correctly classified um, but we can see in the upper part of the scans some flickering of the, of the labels, which can mainly be explained by the different fields of view of the sensor. As you might remember, um, the Kitty dataset uses a 64 velo uh, beam velodyne, which has a, a narrower field of view than the 32 LIDAR, uh, beam LIDAR sensor from the new scene data. And this, uh, this leads to the uh, synthetic uh, scans that were generated never having labels for the upper part of the scan. So, but still we can see that um, often the, uh, the points in the upper part still get uh, correctly classified. And when we come now back to our motivating example, then we can see before the main adaptation, we had the problem that these pedestrians get wrongly classified as uh, vegetation or car points. 
and the uh, drivable surface um, in front of the car get now classified as, as um, a terrain. But when we now see, when we use our domain adaptation approach, we can see that we can get correctly classified the pedestrians, but also get the correct classification for the drivable space. To summarize my talk, um, we present a method for unsupervised domain adaptation, where we generate first a scan that looks like uh, it would, taken, would have been taken from a target sensor in a target domain. Using this generated scan, we train then a model and furthermore use the uh, correlation alignment to further improve the results. This leads to substantial improvements in terms of the mean intersection over union, which um, got improved from um, just 12% MIOU to 35% MIOU. In future, we not only want to uh, investigate the uh, opposite uh, direction from moving from a 32 beam uh, sensor with a wider field of view to a 64 beam uh, um, sensor, but also want to investigate how we can also generate the remission information. Because remission is important as an important signal for the semantic segmentation approach as it can maybe lead to better performance for, for instance, for traffic signs. Thank you for your attention.